One of the common use cases in AI is to build your own RAG pipelines. RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation and it means that if you need to provide context to your large language models from your own data, you do RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. In Retrieval Augmented Generation, there are two key steps. One is Retrieval and then the other one is Generation. But there is another step before that. And that another step is to prepare your data for this RAG or Retrieval and Generation. What it means is that, for example, you have a text file or you have a PDF file where you have your own data. First, you need to split or chunk it into smaller components that is called as a splitter phase. And then that splitted document is converted into embeddings or numerical representations. And then these numerical representations get stored into a vector store. And that vector store could be anything. It could be your in-memory vector store or a database or it could be a hosted cloud service or any other database like Postgres on your own system. Once these steps are done, where we have divided the data into chunks, where we have converted that into numerical representation and stored it into a vector store, then in that vector store, you can create an index on your data for faster access. And then from here, we first retrieve the data whenever a user asks a query from LLM in context of our own data. And then after the retrieval, the LLM generates a response which is grounded or augmented by our own data. So that is the whole concept behind this retrieval augmented generation. The key idea is that these LLMs, these are pre-trained on a huge humongous amount of data and they don't know about our data. So if we want to make that LLM our own data aware, we need to do the RAG. Now, all of these steps which I have mentioned from chunking or splitting to generation, mm -hmm. there are few choices here. You can build everything from scratch, very, very customizable. Mm -hmm. If you have a huge requirement where you want to extract every bit of performance out of it, where you are very, very aware of how these things work, and you want to use your own components at e each and every step, then I would recommend that you do it at your own. But if you don't really want to uh, get into the nitty gritty of this RAG pipeline, then I would highly suggest have a look at any framework which can enable or which can abstract a lot of details from you. And you can focus on building your RAG pipeline quickly with all these components and then just focus on your business logic and application. There are numerous frameworks which are available out there and Haystack is one of those frameworks which enables you to have an abstracted way of building a RAG pipeline. What Haystack does is it provides you components for each step which I mentioned earlier for chunking or splitting and then for retrieval for generation. And then you just pick those components knit them together in a pipeline or a rag pipeline and then you just simply run that pipeline on your own data and it provides you an end-to-end -end framework or a toolkit to build a pipeline so that is what haystack does and this is not just the only tool which you can use there are a lot of other tools um, which have appeared on the market and as the industry is evolving and progressing the good thing is that we see more and more uh, toolkits and i have covered like uh, 50 or 60 such tools already this year on the channel so if you're interested just search with rag or rag pipeline and you should be able to see a lot of other videos here now for haystack this is by deep set and they also have a hosted cloud version which is of course a paid version so i'm not going to go there we are just going to look at this github repo of haystack and my intention is to get it installed locally and then we will play around with it you can of course use API based models with it like OpenAI, Cohere and there are a few others. There are a lot of integrations which you can access from their website or you can integrate it with Olama based models. Olama is one of the fastest way to run quantized GGVF models locally. What it does is it shrinks the model size uh, so that there are lesser memory requirements in terms of VRAM on your GPU or even the smallish models you can run on CPU. I have done hundreds of videos on Olama as of to this date. So if you're interested, just search the channel 
and you should be able to find heaps of videos around Olama. So I'm going to use the Olama integration with this haystack and then we will see how it works. Right. Okay. So before I show you the installation, let me give a huge thanks to Mast Compute who are sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you're looking to install or run a GPU on affordable prices, I will drop the link to their website in video's description. Plus you are also going to get a coupon code of 50% discount on range of GPU. So do check them out. Okay. So that said and done, let me take you to my terminal and we will start get cracking on it. So this is my terminal where I'm running Ubuntu 22.04 and this is my GPU card NVIDIA RTX A6000. Let me clear the screen and now let's first install a virtual environment with Conda just to keep everything separate and simple. So my Conda environment is created and activated as you can see in parentheses on the left hand side. Let's install all the prerequisites which include Torch, Transformers and then I am installing this haystack. Plus, I am also at the end installing Haystacks integration with Olama with this Olama dash Haystack package. So let's run it and wait for it to finish. This is going to take three to four minutes. So it has installed everything. Now let me launch my Jupyter notebook so that we will play around with it in the notebook environment in the browser. And while that happens, let me quickly take you to my term, another terminal on the same server. I just wanted to show you that my Olama is already installed and I have these two models already present. We'll be using Llama 3.1 from here. So let's wait for it to get a launch in the browser. There you go. So our Jupyter notebook is launched. Let me go with the notebook. And our notebook is launched here. First, let's import some of the stuff which we have installed, which includes Haystack, of course. This is imported. And now just quickly, if we want to check how the generator works in um, Haystack. So we are just using this Olama generator function from Haystack. And then I'm specifying my local model 3.1, Llama 3.1. And then this is the local URL of where Olama is running. This is the default port 11434 and these are some of the hyperparameters to control the output and the generator is initialized as you can see let me print out the response of the generator and there you go you can see that the generator has come up with this reply where it has given me the response plus it has given me a lot of numerical representation too um, one thing i have noticed that generator is quite slow with olama but when i was trying it out with open ai it was quite uh, fast anyway so that is just my observation okay so generator is done but we are more interested in the retrieval augmented generation so let's see how can we build a rag pipeline with this haystack using olama so for that uh, let me import some of the libraries and remember that in haystack or in any other rag pipeline for that matter we have different components. We have a component for splitting or chunking, for um, in-memory vector store, for retrieval and for generation. So that is why you see here what we are importing, we are just importing Olama generator. And then this is our in-memory vector store. You can of course use uh, any other vector store, like you can go with Pinecone, Viviate, Chroma, there are a lot of them. And then I already have done a video on it as how to select a vector store and you can search with a vector store on my channel. And then we are importing all of this stuff. So let me quickly import it. That is done. And now let's define a template. And this all this template is doing, it is just telling it this is a question and this is a, a context. That's all. This is a very standard format where we define a prompt template as how to talk with the application. Okay, now next up, let's define our documents. Now, the good thing about Haystack is that it allows you to have this in-memory store where we are initializing it. So we are not using any external vector store database here. We are just putting it all in the memory. And then these are the documents which we are writing. So by documents, this is a content one-liners. Of course, you can replace it with full-blown documents of your choice. You can use any uh, standard input output library to just read it through the file and then 
put it in the content and then you can write those document in your memory so let me run it and that is done and it has told you that four it means that there are four documents in which it has read okay so that is done next up let's as usual get our generator from olama we already have done it but let's for the sake of completion run it again and the generator has been done next up let's create a pipeline which is uh, the real beauty of this haystack and such framework that it makes it so easy to build a pipeline by knitting these components together so you see we are just simply initializing a pipeline first component we are adding retriever then prompt builder with the help of the template which we have defined and retriever is simply specifying the memory store and then this is a generator with the llm and then we are connecting all of these together retriever prompt builder with the document and then this uh, this is our prompt builder so you see it is just one by one in tandem retriever prompt builder prompt builder llm so this is your pipeline goes through phases so let me run it and you see once you run it it gives you the whole pipeline stack that these are the components of the pipeline retriever prompt builder and llm and then these are the connections for the retriever document and then uh, how it is connected together how good is that and in order to run and all you need to do is to just run the pipe with um, the prompt builder your own query and your retriever so for example if you want to ask a query from your own data anything like what is my favorite sport and then it is going to run the pipe and give you the result back and print the result so let me run it and this is grounded in the data by the way you see the documents which we have given it is telling us my favorite sport is soccer so let's see if it is able to get it from the data it has finished running it let's print out the result here and there you go so it is telling us that your favorite sport is soccer and then it is giving us a lot of other information so llama 3.1 which is running locally and then there are a few other tidbits around evaluation and a lot of other stuff which it has given and because we are using local llm so there is no token cost everything is private local how good is that and similarly when i asked it what is my favorite food it is now telling me that there is no information provided about your favorite food the context only men mentions your preference for soccer the season of summer and the aversion to sci-fi books and crowded places how good is that so you see uh, we have ensured that the responses are totally grounded in our own information and it is it makes it so easy to build your end-to-end -end rack pipeline with your own data with the help of this um, haystack and even um, of course this is just a playground but if you're building a production grade one all you need to do here is that keep olama and all that stuff maybe but i'm using olama uh, llama 3.1 you could go with maybe llama 70 billion but just to uh, have more grunt plus instead of going with this in memory vector store if you're doing a production grade one go with any other database and if you want to stay free and local go with postgres database with a pg vector extension and then just store it there and all you need to do is specify it here that's all and if you don't know how to install postgres with pg vector i already have done a video on it just search it on the channel and you should be able to find it but all in all that's how you run haystack locally with olama with your own model with your own data i hope that you enjoyed it let me know what do you think I will drop all of this code in my blog and I will drop the link in video's description. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you are already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thanks for watching.